you to give you an idea how I run this class, I want to give you just a little bit of background. Uh, this is my 22nd year in practice. I'm officially been in this 22. It was 22 years ago in February that I became certified with uh, Dr. Krasner. I used to call him Crazy Al, but since he just died, I'm trying to be a little more respectful. I'm sure he wouldn't appreciate that at all, though. <laughs> But uh, Al Krasner was, was my first teacher out in Calif Southern California, and he wrote a book called The Wizard Within. And I'll be bringing that book in quite a bit and uh, referring to it now and then because it's, it's just such a wonderful metaphor for, us, for a lot of the things we do in hypnosis. It covers a lot of the bases that we cover with most of the techniques and methods that, w that we use. And what you're going to find is there's a lot of similarities when, when we talk about learning a, a lot of techniques and methods and processes and all these words we use <coughs> for what do you do when you get the person into the hypnotic state. You know, once they're there, what you do. You know, there's different words for that. Bottom line is there's, there's really no, uh, there's no structured template for everybody because what we teach here is definitely client-centered. And you're going to learn a lot of techniques and I'm going to teach them to you very, very closely to the way to the way they were designed by the people who designed them, because I want to stay uh, true to and honor those people, the way they develop these techniques. And yet, even even some of those, even all of those, probably, if you went back and asked them, like the library technique, for instance, you'll be learning from Dr. Preston, who was also one of my early teachers out in Arizona. And if you went to him and said, you know, I went did the library technique, but I changed this little piece, and when I got to this part, I did it a little differently, he would say, congratulations, because it's all about adapting these techniques to your client, right? So uh, you're going to learn a lot of specifics and, and little scripts that you'll be reading that will look like, oh, this is a script that I would do to change someone's belief or to help someone to relax or to uh, do something else, to alleviate a fear or whatever it is. And yet it's more the, the <coughs> scripts, I think of scripts as more of a, of a practice script. I think of it as a starting point. It's a training tool to be even more accurate. It's a training tool because I know some hypnotists that are trainers that don't like to use any scripts and I know that when I started that would have terrified me. <laughs> it was like, well, what am I supposed to say, you know? Because it's all, it, it really is all about what your language of hypnosis, which is a different language than the way we speak normally in the outside world. Although I think once we've been doing this a while, we kind of talk that way a little bit even out there. But, but there's a general different, a little bit of a different uh, hat that we put on when we have a client sitting in front of us. And that's when all of those techniques and tools and methods and processes and language patterns and all the things you've learned in here and out in the world, hopefully beyond this room, because definitely encourage that, that they'll all be in your toolbox. And then when you get in front of your client and you connect, you do Reiki, so you know that connecting is the first thing, and get that rapport. And then you go, you go and trust your creative unconscious to pull out what little piece of what you might need for that person based on what what you're getting from them so that's more of the style that we teach here um, I, I do introduce some styles that are very very not my style and I do that because I want you to see what else is available in the universe of hypnosis and there's as many styles as there are trainers I'm absolutely positive of that and yet you'll see little similarities between people I've been around Michael Watson in Orlando a gentleman that I bring in here to uh, teach NLP I've been around him so much for the last 11 years since I've been in Florida that I I know I've adapted some of his uh, ways of doing things or saying things without even realizing it but that's how we learn everything isn't it mm -hmm. we learn by modeling we learn by, we notice something someone else does, and maybe even just on an unconscious level, at some point later on in our life, you know, it pops in our head that this is going to be the appropriate response or the appropriate thing to say or the way to say it for, for who you're communicating with. And you may not even remember who or where or how you saw or heard or found that. And it'll probably be adapted a little bit for your style anyway. So if you read a lot of hypnosis books, you'll see a lot of similarities. And, and the basic, the very basics are pretty much all the same, you know. And for all the processes, you're going to learn all the techniques for each thing that are designed kind of to deal with certain, certain personality things or certain uh, conditions or whatever that you're going to learn. You'll also see how you can take 
practically, if not all of those, and adapt them for something that is different than what it was written down that it was for, right? So there's so that's the other thing. Everything is pretty pretty uh, well rounded enough that you can take pieces of different things that you're going to learn and kind of put them all together for the person that you're that you're working with. So I was just uh, explaining a little bit about uh, hypnosis and my theory behind scripts that they're a starting point and that um, you know they're they're a learning tool. Uh, I love using scripts, and I've had a lot of people come back to me to tell me, is it, are we placed okay? He's videotaping. <laughs> Wave. Okay. We're going to make you do your introduction in a second here, but Ooh. let me finish my thought. Um, basically, the, the scripts that you're going to be uh, reading through for practice purposes are a way for you to practice, first of all, getting the, uh, la some of the language patterns and some of the, the uh, hypnotic patter, as we call it, into your uh, mind, your brain into your neurology, as they say, and so that as you get used to the different way that you talk when you're using hypnotic type scripts, so that they'll kind of start to be automated, and by the time you finish the course, you'll be doing a lot of things where you'll be ad-libbing and, and creating your own, um, you know, scenarios. Actually, even this weekend, you'll be doing one kind of like that before the weekend's over. So uh, just know that, and, and the goal, of course, uh, ultimately is that when you get the client in front of you, you don't need these scripts anymore. But I still think they're great learning tools. Even uh, even after 22 years, I still love reading other people's scripts. They give me ideas. They get your creative juices going, right? Because it's interesting to see different people's styles and how that works. Um, my practice right now, uh, I do pretty much full-time <laughs> private practice. Uh, I work with kids, adults, children, couples. Um, I do a lot of family therapy. And then I've been incorporating more uh, hypnotherapy uh, over the last year, really, uh, using it with uh, pain issues, uh, behavioral medicine issues like dealing with MS and gastrointestinal issues, um, also using it uh, with depression and building self-esteem. I've done it with kids, and that's that's always interesting uh, because they have great imaginations. Mm -hmm. um, and. Uh, Patty and I actually, I, well, one of the other things I do is I also am adjunct faculty uh, at Argosy, which is a clinical psychology doctor program. Mm -hmm. So they have a PsyD doctorate. So I've been teaching there for about eight years. And um, they've, we've been talking it up, and they actually uh, have become very interested. So they're, uh, actually this past fall, Patty and I did a presentation for their faculty and uh, community psychologists and their students and uh, so they're going to actually they've tried three times and now they think they have the student base so that this summer I'm going to uh, start teaching in the doctoral program hypnotherapy. I have taught assessment and other therapies and also teach about medicines and things like that uh, but this will be the first time that they're incorporating a hypnotherapy on a doctoral level and the hope is eventually move it into a track. I, I um, pretty much teach in the pediatric track, so I teach about working with kids and things, but it's possible they may move to that, and that's, Patty and I have talked about uh, some different ventures that we can do with that. Yeah. And Patty and I, over this past year, have been working on a book that <laughs> that we're still working <laughs> on. In fact, we're gonna be, in fact, you have some of the PowerPoint yep. of what we're gonna be presenting on uh, at the IAC conference. Mm -hmm. uh, what it really does is it takes uh, clinical diagnostics from like the new DSM-5, which is a statistical manual that they have, that it's how they diagnose people. And what's interesting about this is that for, uh, for many clinical hypnotherapists, if you're IAC certified, you, many people may not be a, a mental health clinician. And then the question is, well, what would the purpose be in understanding about diagnoses? Well, one of the things is oftentimes uh, IAC therapists as well as licensed clinicians, it becomes best practices when you network, and oftentimes you're required to, to network with the referring clinicians. Mm -hmm. So a physician might find out that you have an expertise in a certain area, being able to understand that language. You don't have to know how to diagnose, but understanding, ah, that's what this diagnosis means. And what it does is, it actually gives you kernels of information that you unpack. And it helps you then understand what you might want to use the clinical hypnotherapy for in going to help create relief or assistance for somebody through hypnosis. 
So that's what our presentation is this uh, at IAC, and actually you'll be getting some of it, so you'll have a chance Absolutely. to see how it works. Yeah, that's one of the things we're going to be uh, using the next mm -hmm. few months until, well, from now on probably, but you'll be the first class to benefit from us bringing in some, uh, some information that, that will add to what we've done previously in this class. That's and I think exciting. I think that's really exciting, yeah. yeah. And this is where I see uh, the field of hypnotherapy really exploding now. It's, it seems like within the last, I, I'd always seen it kind of, you know, going into the medical, but I haven't seen as many people really breaking some new ground and, and really taking it into that, to that realm, uh, the way that uh, with Roy Hunter and Bruce Eimer getting together with that book that they had last year um, on regression work you know, getting the world of psychology and the world of, of hypnotherapy together. That was a, a nice little groundbreaking thing. And there's, there's more to come. I'm and we're going to do that, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But there's a certain number of hours that you're required to be able to be here, and then the rest of it is done with outside work. So you will have some outside assignments, but you'll be doing those anyway because you'll be wanting to practice what you get in here. But uh, as soon as you graduate, like I said, you'll be certified hypnotherapist through, the, through IACT, and you'll, yes. you'll have the full membership then as a professional, whatever there term is for that, uh, 